Sindi IPOB Yabo Indigenous People of Biafra O Potakwala Weku Ozo Namba Suzi Nkona Basa Kembe O Bara Osondia Wega Obudu Israel Yabo Na Jerusalem Eba Kono Weku Oku Nka Abatankano Ya Oku Ola Na Biafra Gabi Aririm Oku Kwara Oku Di Chiche Makanosi Na Yebidogo Ikuye Oya Honona Asurok Nobuye Oye Chenobo Nobo oye si Sudan. Iho kuru karireo. Le kwa no mageya. I gave some of you assignment last week to do. I read on social media. Even on half year is on, is on 102.1 this evening. The whole world is vibrating. But they went and paid the phone newspaper to write rubbish. We have, what is it? We have harvested. Let me last one. We have harvested. Kebana Abuja, we have harvested radio Biafra frequencies. Lena Boki. I'm a Biafran. I am Igbo. I am intelligent, more than all of you put together. So how do you think you can defeat me? It's not possible. You must know that. All the consultants you've been hiring all over the world, have they made any dent on what we are doing? The answer is no. So that should tell you something. I gave an assignment last week and very few people did it. <laughs> this evening, in fact, I was so impressed by the accuracy of one of you that conducted a very detailed research into Jubril. We are going to go through it tonight. Don't go, I've not had any sip of water. I don't expect anybody to get bored. Are you people bored? No, sir. I don't. This is Radio Biafra. My name is Nnam Dekano. I must preach this very gospel. I have to. Buhari collapsed during my court case on the 17th of January 2017. Who got your hands ask them? Elohim sent me a message. I was in prison. I said I must tell Buhari to let my people go. And we sent that message to him. Do you know what Elohim told me? That if Buhari hears my message, he will go deaf, dumb, he will collapse, he will never wake up again. I want to tell you this. I sent the message to Buhari. And he got it. He collapsed. He was rushed immediately to London via Casablanca in Morocco. His presidential jet made a stopover. You know, that's so stupid. They don't know that every flight has a log. How do you think I found out Buhari was in, in Saudi Arabia? The presidential jet left London to Saudi Arabia. They don't know who they're playing with. I see things many years ahead before it happens. People say I'm a prophet. That's what I do. We must preach this gospel. In Casablanca, go and check the log of the presidential jet that Buhari took out of the zoo on the 9th stroke, 17th stroke 18th of January. They picked up a life support machine in Casablanca. Buhari was put on a life support machine inside the presidential aircraft and flown to London. He got to London, he underwent brain surgery to, re to remove a tumor and release the pressure on his brain. The surgery they were claiming was partly successful, but Buhari was too weak and was declared brain dead on the 20th of January 2017. I give you timeline and date. Where they are now, they are suffering from severe cold. Their bodies are shaking. I don't want to tell them if I have informants in the UK. But I want to tell the combination of DSS, intelligence agency in the zoo. Everything you have in the zoo, you are not up to one 
IPOB intelligence officer, not one. All of you put together. Their wall must collapse tonight. The wall of fraud and deception. Buhari died. But to avoid the onset of rigor mortis, for those of you who are into medical sciences, to avoid the onset of rigor, he was placed still in an oxygen tent, life support machine. The doctors did all they could to revive him, but nothing came of it. There was a picture taken of an emergency meeting of northern governors where El Rufai, that midget, that rabbit, was presiding. But look at their faces. It's an assignment because if I give you everything, man, this is All we do is to consume. We don't manufacture anything. I want some of you to go and do some research. Go and look for that picture. We are El Rufai. And all the northern governors, we are looking as if all their mothers died at the same time. We must continue. On the 27th of January, the life support machine was switched off and uh, Muhammad Buhari was pronounced dead. His corpse, Ozunia, was flown to Saudi Arabia on the 28th of January, 2017, for internment. Do you doubt me? Ask your zoo. Please give us the log. You know that aircraft that was parked in London, in Luton Airport for how many months? Please, when it took off, where did it log it was going to? They will tell you Saudi Arabia on the presidential jet. They don't know who we are. On the 28th, the flight took off from Luton Airport. With Buhari's dead body on board. The work to bring Buhari's replacement started immediately and I will tell you why. I said it before and I will tell you now. Which was why they filed a case in the court against him. My good friend Fanny Kayode. He's an essayist so he writes very brilliant articles. You, you know he's learned. Very brilliant articles he writes. He wrote about the curse upon Fulani. Anytime they're going to Asorok, they must die. You know that Yaradua died in Asorok. And so did Buhari. I don't want to say anything about him. Um, what's his name? What's the name of the next Fulani man contesting? What's his name again? Atika Bubaka. He should be very careful. We must proceed. The work to replace Buhari started almost immediately. A few senior APC members were taken into confidence and informed about the switch from Buhari to Jubril. Those months of silence was when they were undergoing extensive test and plastic surgery. They recruited four people. Madanoka Uruku, four. To test and see if they can behave like Buhari or if the face can be molded to look like Buhari. Because they were determined not to relinquish power. Go and ask every heavyweight politician in Yoruba land, in Igbo land, in Awosa land, they will tell you in Fulani, controlled territories. Because there's, not, there's nothing like Awosa. Awosa doesn't exist anymore. They only have language. Fulani is there. Fulani controls them. There's nothing like Awosa. So I say Fulani. In Fulani control, there is one. Ask them. Ask each and every one of them. They knew. Some were paid hush money to keep quiet. Do you remember when Aisha came back from Saudi Arabia? And they asked her at Abuja airport, uh, where are you coming from? She said, I went to perform a lesser hajj in Saudi Arabia. That was when she was coming, returning from her husband's funeral. It's all there. Look at their faces. She should have worn black. But they wanted to disguise everything. So, none of you will be the wiser. None of you will be. Because they will say, after all, you are, you are Nigerians, which means you are animals in a zoo. You don't know anything. So, why bother? Why bother telling you? Aisha went to Saudi Arabia to bury her husband. 
she claimed she went for a lesser hajj. Remember when they said Aisha was being bad by Maman Daura and Abakiari from Singh Buhari? You remember all those um, Mickey Mouse stories we are told? That was when they were preparing the double. Jubril was being prepared to be paid $250 million cash to impersonate Buhari. But when he came, now they want him to contest again. In June, July, a carefully choreographed drama of Buhari starting to receive visitors in London was played out <laughs> on Channel TV. You know, it's an APC television. When PDP was there, the number one TV station was AIT. You know, they all have their TV stations. Now, a PDP is no longer there. Owuj is in the uh, AIT. The, the big boss now is a channel, channel TV. Because there are people are in power. You see how the zoo works. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They claim Buhari is now seeing visitors. How can you see visitors if you cannot talk? Remember all those times. Buhari never, Jubri never said a word. Because they were still training him on his voice coaching. They were still trying to perfect the vocal cords in his throat. So he can sound authentic like Buhari. Oh, he's having visitors. They, that was when they were testing your stupidity as a Nigerian to see if you catch on. But uh, when you go to university for for one year out of five years and you graduate, this is the result now. When they bring uh, an imposter, you wouldn't know. All those strikes, that is what it does. It damages your brain and your ability to reason. You can't think very well. There was no video. They were they kept photoshopping some photographs of um, Buhari look alike. They bring Jibril. They were testing you to see if you can tell the difference. As soon as the stupidity of the zoo got hold of everybody, they decided to bring Jibril home. No public meetings. This Jibril they brought became more vicious and evil. That even the Buhari that he replaced. As soon as I said, this is Jubril, they sent the army to come to kill me. But Justice John Tozo, being the idiot that he is, being the very evil, wicked man that he is, corrupt and inept, he never, he, you know, when you say somebody jumped bail, the next thing to ask is, why? But you see in Nigeria, they don't ask why. Because there are some newspapers in Lagos, Yoruba papers in Lagos, that will help them to sell the news. They call it the narrative. Then the Nagahu school, Nasubeke, narrative. Do you see how silly and useless Nigeria is? Do you see why we want Biafra? We must proceed. When Fali Kayode gave a private interview alleging that Buhari has a look-alike in Jubril from Sudan, they threatened AIT. They said to AIT, if you dare air that very video, we will show you. AIT being an African TV station staffed by Africans who are naturally cowards and cannot stand up to fight evil. Uh, they succumbed. Go and ask Ango Abdullahi. As mad as he, as he is, did he not say that that thing there doesn't look like Buhari? Ango Abdullahi, go and ask him. Even the attack on my house backfired. They wheeled out Ojo Zokalo to say things about me that he ought not to have said because they were lies. When the world started asking questions, everybody was asking questions as a result of what I said, it became very clear that this Jubril is 15 years younger. What is even 15 years? Almost 25 years young, younger than Buhari. Look at Buhari's hands before and look at the hands of Jubril. That tells you all you need to know. All of a sudden, Buhari that was so tall became shorter. Buhari swam overnight. 
And if you ask, oh, no, I want to go and vote. Have you gotten your PVC? But the person you are planning to vote for is not Buhari. Can't you reason? I'm sorry some of you can't because you are from Africa. Black from Africa. Absolutely useless. Look at his ear. Everybody go and get Buhari's picture now. Look at the ear from Buhari's old pictures. Go and look at it. And then look at the ear of Jibril. And tell me if Abba Kiari is not making a mess and a fool of everybody. This one is now Daga. All of a sudden, no more chemotherapy. You know when you undergo chemotherapy, your, your hair always fall off. This one, there is no problem. His hair is intact. His nose is now looking like an Arab man. Look at his nose very well. Is that the nose of Buhari? Maybe they may change it between now and Tuesday. They may call in an emergency surgeon or use plasticine. You know, those people that do special effects for Hollywood filmmakers. When he came back, they said a rat infested his office. He couldn't get in because his fingerprint was no longer working. It's a safe place. You remember what happened to Babangida at Dodan Barras with Gideon Oka? That was how they designed Asorok. Babangida was the first person to move to Abuja. So he designed Asorok so that what happened to him with Gideon Oka will not happen again. That nobody can just access his office unless he buses you in. So they built it in such a way that it will scan your finger, your fingerprint, read it, and then let you in if you're the president. They came back now without planning ahead. And the door would not open. They lied to you and told you it was rat or mice infestation. And all of you, as usual, you bought it. They spent nearly three months trying to change. Because it's like, it's a blast proof. It's like a, the, 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 a bank vault. Imagine a proper, not the type of vault you have in the zoo. I mean a proper bank vault. Imagine it. They had it replicated inside that's a rock. So that no bomb, bullet, anything can penetrate to the walls. They had to change everything and when they brought in Jubril. That was exactly what happened. Do you, do all of you remember when Zara used to tweet and post from inside that's a rock? Has that been happening? All of a sudden? The army is now powerful and extremely dumb because it is Abak Yari's plan. With that midget in Kaduna, El Rufai, to expand Islam and finish Buhari's work for him. The United Kingdom government and the U.S. said they know the truth. They know the truth. And I'm sure they must have used it to negotiate very lucrative economic deals with the Kaaba. In order to satisfy external interest and embezzle more money by the cabal, that is why the zoo is economy is so low and now the poverty capital of the world. They are using all the money from the budget to settle all the people that know that Buhari is dead. That's why they cannot do anything. I hope it's now flowing. Are you following what I'm saying? The headquarters of poverty is now the zoo, according to the Global Rating Index. Do you think the cabal is interested in improving the economy of the zoo? They are like Yahoo boys, are a bunch of kidnappers. They've kidnapped the entire economy. That is why your children cannot find any meaningful job once they graduate. Since Jubril, this fake Buhari entered, which major project is going on in the zoo? You only hear of promises and lies upon lies. Whoever brought a Sudanese man and made him to undergo plastic surgery in London and unleashed him on the dumbest and most cowardly population on earth 
is an evil man. Even during the height of colonialism, such evil could not have been perpetrated. If Abba Kiyari and his gang had chosen another Fulani man, perhaps it wouldn't be a major problem. But they went all the way to Sudan to pick somebody to impersonate Buhari. This is the height of deceit. This is the highest form of evil. All of you have suddenly forgotten that Queen, Her Britannic Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, sent a message of condolence to the family of Muhammad Buhari and the people of Nigeria. Fact. This was widely reported. But those that wanted to hold on to power at all costs refused to hand over to Sibajo. They were blaming Obasanjo, saying Obasanjo did the same thing to them with Yaradua, that he's doing the same thing again to them now with, with Buhari. So they won't agree. Go and ask Atiku Abubakar, the PDP presidential candidate. Ask him! Tell me, ask him in the name of Allah! Is that person there Buhari or not? And then you get the answer from him. Everybody knows that a doormat has more value than the position of a vice president. We all know that. That Jonathan got there was sheer luck. Nothing more, nothing less. Fulani Caliphate will consistently overshadow and overrule you. The message from Queen Elizabeth got a lot of people thinking. Do you remember that Africa Union held a meeting in Addis Ababa on the 2nd of February of 2017? Is that true or false? It's true, isn't it? Now, they held a minute silence for somebody during that meeting. Who was that minute silence for? For who? They don't know that the Africa Union, they have authenticated minutes of their meeting. And it is there till tomorrow morning. Maybe they may go to Nadra and announce it to go and pay them to erase it. But we know that the AU held them in the silence for Buhari. Remember the picture of a lifeless and a dead Buhari in London Hospital? I'm sure some of you have seen it. That was before the rigor mortis set in in London. That picture comes, uh, confirms, of course, beyond every doubt that Buhari is dead. Even people within the zoo presidency, they know that he's dead, but they're pretending. They're all pretending. The log of the presidential jet confirms everything that I've told you. The amount of fraud going on in Asorok is not just the fake Buhari. Fraudulently fabricated certificates. They fabricate. Jubril Aminu al Sudani is an impostor. He is not a Nigerian. Neither does he come from West Africa. All they know is to forge and to fabricate. Okorocha knows. One day he will speak the truth. The truth must be told on Radio Biafra. Because Abba Kiyari and his co-conspirators have taken 180 million people for a ride. If you are looking for any confirmation that we black Africans are daft and foolish, the issue of Jubril is all there is to confirm that. Buhari is dead. The younger looking certificate forging imposter in Asorok is a Sudanese brought in to pretend to Buhari. Had Abakiari taken the hint and declined to field Jubril for the 2019 elections, perhaps they would have gotten away with it. But they grew very greedy. You know greed, they say absolute power corrupts absolutely. So they felt they could get away with it. 
That is why they even had the affront to feel the fraud. Abakiari and the zoo will go down with Jibreel. Satan of Sokoto is part of it. This satanic cabal that imported Jibreel to rule over you, a Sudanese man. You did not vote for him. And some of you are idiotically thinking of going to vote for him next year. I don't know who created black people, honestly. They must ask themselves this question. Why did Queen Elizabeth write a condolence letter if Buhari wasn't dead? They said the death of Buhari came to them as a shock. The Queen wrote it. They have denied everything because they are liars. Do you remember Dora Kunili? Without Dora Kunili speaking up, the same thing they are doing now with Jubilee they could have done with Yaradua. But Dora Kunili, an Igbo woman, spoke up. Although they killed her, they poisoned her in the process. She died, yes. But Dora Kunili made Jonathan's presidency possible. There was no Dora Akunyili in APC cabinet. That was why they managed to smuggle in Jubril. If they had an evil person in Buhari's cabinet, he or she would have stood up to say this is evil. Give powers to Usibaja. That reminds me of what happened Immediately after Tiwa Danjima killed Agi Ronsi. There was a European man called Brigadier Ogundipe. Brigadier Ogundipe was the highest ranking soldier after Ironsi, if I'm not mistaken. And it fell to him to assume command of the Nigerian Armed Forces and by virtue become head of state. And I was a flanny recruit who took a Mark IV into his office. And the Gundik were fled. He signed over to the north. That was how Gowon became the head of state. Had Ogundik said, no, I will be the head of state, there wouldn't have been any civil war. There wouldn't have been any Biafra Nigeria war. This is raw history that I'm giving to you. Some of the Yoruba people in APC they didn't do what Dora Kunili did. These are some of the entries that uh, Nigerians are not aware of. Not aware of it. And that is very, very sad indeed. Extremely sad. This is Radio Biafra. If you're joining us for the very first time, we are here to make sure that we preach this very gospel that the world may know that Chukwa Biyama asked us to come. We must preach it. We must preach it. If you know Jubril where he is, look at his ears. That will tell you all you need to know. Go and bring Buhari's former pictures and um, compare it with the Jubril that you have in front of you. And then you will understand what is happening. You will come to appreciate what Radio Biafra is doing. Go and tell your people not to vote next year. Because the person you are planning to, whose name is on the ballot paper, is not a Nigerian. He is from Sudan. That is a fact. Some of you may remember that uh, Princess came, didn't he? To the zoo. <laughs> Did he not come to the zoo? Do you know that diplomatic protocol demands that if a visiting dignitary is coming with the wife, you, the recipient or the host, must also present your wife. Are you aware of that? Why is it that Prince Charles was at, as, was at Asa Rock with the Duchess of Cornwall? Is that correct? Camilla Packable. Sorry. Camilla now wins, I'm sure. Did you see Aisha? Anywhere around there. But when Prince Charles went to Ghana to go and see the king, you know where he was sitting and the king was on his um, throne or his stool, I don't know what they call it. Did you not see the wife, the queen, speaking to Camilla Packables 
I was speaking to the Duchess of Cornwall. Did you not see it? Where was Aisha during the visit of Prince Charles and Duchess of Cornwall? These are the little things that you need to look at. It's like being a detective. Very simple things. That should ring a bell. But none of you is aware of that. All of a sudden, Bukola Saraki is now taller than the president. When that wasn't the case before. At least they were the same height. Oh, Bukhari was slightly taller than Saraki. At least the same height. All of a sudden, Saraki is now taller than Bukhari. Huh? Is it, what about America? Uh, America wonder? It's a miracle. A very big miracle. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Then we must continue. This is Radio Biafra. Wherever you're listening to us from on this very planet, it is a privilege because here we speak the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I have not done anything to the zoo, but they have come to kill me. They came to kill me and they couldn't. They turned around to say that I ran away from their country. Do you see how foolish they are? <laughs> so when Tinubu ran away, being pursued by a batch, I didn't run away. You know, you know, you know, Yoruba media, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, Shoinka did not run away. No, 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 no. General Akin Rade did not run away. He's a general, though. He, he ran away to London. And US. No, he didn't. But because Nam the Khan is fighting for Biafra. So let us make a mockery of anything he does. I'm on Lagos. No Zija. Maka may bring who for Nima. I feel sorry for them. Let me not go further. We must continue. The Queen wrote a message of condolence to Buhari and to Nigerian people. Today they are pretending they never saw it. And now they have placed on the ballot paper somebody who shouldn't be there. Somebody who shouldn't be there. Prince Charles came. There was no Aisha. They know that international protocol Proxy, necessities, just name it, dictates. Once a head of state is coming with the wife, for a photo op, it's called, the wife of the host must be there. Aisha was nowhere to be found. Now is the time to start asking questions. I'm telling Nigerians uh, that you call yourselves to start asking questions because I'm not a Nigerian. Although some people chose to misread Abaribe's alleged letter to, to the Israeli embassy in Abuja. He said, our, this is our citizen. I can't remember anymore. I am a Biafran. I am a Biafran, not a Nigerian. God forbid. Britain cannot say they know nothing about this. The Archbishop of Canterbury was wheeled out. The Archbishop of Canterbury allowed the Anglican Church to be used to rubber stamp what is in a sense an international fraud. Archbishop of Canterbury was Buhari's friend when they were stealing oil in the 70s and 80s. Archbishop of Canterbury. They used him to authenticate this fraud. I'm sure Chukwoki Kabiyama will be upset about it. That Nigeria has a very bad reputation for fraud. But what has happened with the imposition of Jubril is the greatest fraud in human history. If the Anglican Church at the highest level is involved in this fraud... There is no way that the British government will not know about it. A modern, democratic, civilized country like Britain should not be a party to a fraud like this. It is not good for their reputation. Of course, Britain is well aware that we black people are a bit fake and slightly dumb. 
Very gullible and not too bright. Is it can The truth. Britain is the creator and the proxy ruler of Nigeria. The great zoo in Africa. I ask, is it not the duty of Britain to at least put a largely ignorant population on the path of the straight and narrow? Buhari is dead. What suddenly changed about Buhari's health? Buhari was in a vegetative state. Suddenly, no more hospital. 15 years younger and 8 inches shorter. Till this evening here in Israel, Buhari cannot speak indigenous Polani language that Buhari spoke fluently. Take away your cap, let us see. He refused. Take a picture in his suit. He refused. But he cannot cover his ears. Can he wear that veil they wear? Come one in the Alakobane. Can he wear it? Boka, can he wear uh, hijab? Maybe he wear hijab to cover his ears. However you look at it, the truth is that Jubril, I'm telling APC tonight, Jubril cannot contest elections next year. APC must know this. He cannot contest. Not only is he a fraud, academically or one certificate, he cannot contest. There is no certificate. He cannot contest. But how did Buhari even manage to contest with that certificate in the first place? You have a law. You made a law. INEC made a law to say, if you don't have these certificates, you will not contest. But in the case of Buhari, they lied and lied and lied. Instead of them to capture Buhari and jail him for perjury, for, 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 for deception and for fraud, they voted him as the pre- Hell! He said he was with the army. The army said we don't have a certificate. I, are you sure that people in Nigeria, those we see, are they human beings? Eh? Are you sure that human beings? Eh? Hi. There is something seriously wrong with black people. Seriously wrong. And I'm sorry to say this. Seriously wrong. We will be the first to complain about racism. But there is nothing about the way we reason that portrays us as humans, to be honest with you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Buhari is dead. Jubril has been brought in to replace him. Even without certificate, some people are contemplating allowing him to contest. Unbelievable. I can't believe this. Jubril cannot contest. He is not academically qualified because he has no certificate, as required by INEC. There is something about a requirement in law which cannot be circumvented. Nigerians were hoodwinked, bamboozled into accepting Buhari's candidature for APC because Obama wanted it. Obama wanted a Muslim in power in Nigeria. And mind you, you know that all the oil licenses were coming up for renewal. They wanted somebody that will renew their oil concessions for them. And they don't want uh, 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 reasonable, sensible people surrounding Jonathan and telling him this is not good for you. That is not good for you. PDP and other parties don't want to push this very case because they know once on Nam the Kano forces the removal of Jubril that Nigeria will collapse and Biafra will come. They don't want that. Iwanyawo doesn't want it. Niyawo doesn't want it. ABC Wosu doesn't want it. Ndiye Konaka Jedi. They want to provoke me. Later they will say, oh, I don't respect this. If you behave like an idiot, I can't respect you. I respect Professor Ben Webeze. I respect Archbishop Obin. And the one I respect, Archbishop Emeritus, I respect. Chief Mrs. Maria Okwari, I respect honorable people, not scavengers running to Abuja talking nonsense. And I call you an ex-minister. You are still scavenging till this day. You have no shame. 
you come out and say you're bullying. They are holding meetings in, in Abuja and Lagos against me. That nobody should listen to me. That uh, uh, he was going to vote. In in return, as Rochas just did, so that their children can be ministers. We'll get to them later. However way you look at it, whichever way you look at it, Jubril cannot contest. If Jubril contest, then I know that Nigerians are lower than even wild animals in the Serengeti. He is not qualified, number one. Number two, Buhari is dead. And Jubril is there. Certificate forgery is an offense under the law in the zoo. Jubril must be prosecuted. You see how clever they are. Every security agency is staffed by one illiterate Fulani man. They know what they're doing. I hope it's the DSS or, or police that will go and arrest Jubril. He's a Fulani man now. Abakiari will be there. Monguno will be there. Danali Monso. These are all Fulani people. Fulani throughout. They will all be there. And who are you going to arrest? You know that's something they say, man past man. They can arrest anybody else, but not their own. How many times have EFCC arrested a northerner? A northern governor? Is it not Gandu? Who was the one that took five million dollars, uh, dollar bribe? Is it Ganduja, whatever they call him? Has he been invited by EFCC? Uh, yeah? But Fayoshe, before he left office, they invited him. This one took bribe on video. Dollars. Has he been invited by EFCC? The answer is no. And an idiotic person somewhere beside me, Nigerian. I'm a proud Nigerian. I feel sorry for you. A vulture is better than you. I'm a proud Nigerian. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Jubilee cannot run. Sometimes I, mean, I even think that the certificate saga was engineered to deflect my attention away from running this expose on Jubril. If that was their plan, I can assure them that they have failed woefully. Nigeria is an evil entity. Everything about Nigeria is evil. Nigerians are themselves evil. The judiciary is a greater evil. And the governance in the zoo is the worst form of evil ever known to any human being. Nigeria should not exist. It shouldn't. The political class in the zoo, be they Igbo, Yoruba, Wosa, not, that's not like I was a Fulani, because uh, Fulani conquered that Wosa and they cease to exist. I don't, I don't count them in the scheme of things. The political class in the zoo, Nigeria, is a group of finely selected, voracious criminals. Intent on stealing. Intent on impoverishing the lives of the masses. They have no conscience, no regard for human life. In the zoo, Nigeria, you will come to the realization that there is something deeply evil about black people. Nigeria epitomizes everything that is bad in a black person. Nothing is done the proper way. They visit civilized countries, they come back more foolish than when they left. Nigeria will go down in history as the greatest mistake that Britain ever made. The greatest mistake they ever made. But I make in Nigeria, Wayek, the West African Examination Council, the judiciary, all are institutions of corruption. In Nigeria, they manufacture corruption. These agencies I've just mentioned must be held accountable for the fraud called Jubril. The fact that INEC accepted nomination papers from APC, fielding 
a Sudanese man, a fraud, makes INEC an accomplice to fraud and deception. The Fulani Caliphate have ruled Nigeria more than anybody else. And that is why Nigeria is in a mess. You cannot give what you don't have. If you have no class, you don't have it. Money can't buy it for you. A certificateless cattle rearing dictator who was rehabilitated by Bola Made Tunubu, Atiku, or Basanja and the rest, and gave him to all of you. Some of you voted for him. You see why I love their friends? We see fraud from a mile away. Southeast and South South never voted for him. Their friends never did. Even Yorubas forgot that their friends voted for Abiola. We see what others cannot see. I wish one day that envy and jealousy can let them appreciate how blessed the Bia friends are. There is no need talking about fight against corruption when the imposter in Asa Rock is corruption personified. Corruption. The world knows Jubril is not Buhari. The zoo Nigeria is a fraudulent country full of fake people with fake promises. Remember Abacha's constituent assembly? To a person just reform, whatever he called it, conference. To Jonathan's confab. Have you ever asked yourself why nothing ever happened to any of these, um, fanciful get together? Because the same oil dependent, lazy allocation, sharing, northern cabal. Now the ones that made sure that none of these reports saw the light of day. Because within each and every one of them is a provision for autonomy. They don't want it. They know if Nigeria were to be split into regions the way it were before, that we in the East will make them look very bad. So what they did is to dump down everybody. So we sink low to the Alamajiri level. We no, we no longer reason properly. All we care about is 1,000 Naira for our PVC so we can go and vote. Just 1,000 Naira. If you do very well, you get 4,000 Naira. People no longer reason. Because Nigerians now reason more or less like Alamajiris. They don't think properly anymore. People who are so lazy, I'm talking about Nigeria, that they base their entire future on oil and gas proceeds from Biafra land. I'm not blaming anybody. The British, our creator, the creator of Nigeria. I say our because they lumped Biafra into Nigeria. Placed them in a very good position. When you give an illiterate control over money with political power and military might, <laughs> there's only one likely outcome. Disaster. Disaster, absolute disaster. That's what we have in the zoo. Do you know that Buhari never completed any school program? Some of you don't know this, but I'll tell you. Or any course in his life. Just imagine how he made it to the rank of a major general. Just because he's Fulani, beloved of the British. LPC said they will restructure Nigeria. What happened when they got into office? It's even in their manifesto. Today they have turned around 360 degrees to unleash the most criminally violent regime in Nigeria's history. If you think Atiku will restructure Nigeria, then you're even more stupid than Abaki Yari that thought he can get away with planting Jubril. Because nothing will happen. Do you know they control the Senate and the House of Reps? 
any change you vote for must go through the House of Reps and Senate, where they have inbuilt majority. So we should stop dreaming and join IPOB to boycott elections if you want instant results. The only restructuring that Nigeria has ever undertaken is to restructure Jubilee's face to make him look like her Buhari. That's the only restructure they have done. They restructure his face so he can look like Buhari. The truth is that, do you see the Fulani you are saying to talk about one Nigeria? We must live together as brothers and sisters. The Fulani people never believed in one Nigeria. In case you get ready to play that clip from me, from my mother, but I played it in 2015. <coughs> or 2014. And, uh, Buhari was shouting. Some of you say I don't respect Dr. Nam I want to tell you why I don't respect him. All of us will listen to this clip tonight. And then you will know that there is something wrong, seriously wrong, with how we reason. I want to prove to anybody listening tonight, to everybody I should say, and to anybody for that matter listening tonight, that Fulani people never wanted one Nigeria. I want to prove to you that Fulani people have always hated Igbo people and will hate us forever and ever. You can't go and already play it for me. So that they can listen. The world can listen. And understand what I'm talking about. You're going to hear the voice of Sam Adubelo. I give it to him. He's very intelligent. As a matter of fact, I actually like him. Because he is always, or he was always, defending the interest of the North. To hell with one Nigeria. That's what he was saying. Until Azikiwe came with his useless sense. And, uh, when I'm going to buy an Onobo Are you ready? Please play him for me, please. That the world may know. That the world may know what we're talking about. Major. Talks about killing your premier. Add on top of that the North's general hate of the East. And you can start to get the picture of the sort of tribal tension Nigeria was heading towards. One thing I've noticed, Premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I might almost call it, obsession about the Igbos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities, because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't ten northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians a temporary or a permanent one? In actual fact, what it is, is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it will be rather dangerous to see the number of boys we are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will uh, feel rather embarrassed, and it might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country? Well, it might, but um, you are, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be ten laborers employed only. I, I hope it's very clear now. The voice you were hearing there is that of um, Sir Amadou Bello. Because of this very interview, a coup was arranged and he was killed. I don't support it. 
I think the coup was very foolish. Those that planned the coup was very naive. They believed in one Nigeria. But this is a man protecting the interest of his own people. He made it very clear that he does not believe in one Nigeria. He was talking to a white man and saying to a white man, if I don't have a northerner who can do the job, I will give it to a white person. I will not give it to an African person. I will give it to a British man or woman. These are the people you want to be in the same country with. It is their children and their children's children that are killing you today in the army. They are the ones in Boko Haram. They are the ones in Fulani terrorist Miyeti Allah. The headsmen. Do you see the way they reason? Do you see how they think? Nam de Azikiwe is well educated. He knew all these things. But the allure and the attraction of being the head of state in this vast wasteland that includes the north was the reason why he agreed to step down for Tafawa Balewa. Or to agree with the fraudulent census that was conducted and used as the basis of allocating seats in the federal house then in Lagos. How can I listen to such a person and then after that, afterwards I want to be in the same country with you? I must be foolish. Do you see why I don't like Azikiwe? It's very simple. And very practical. This is Radio Biafra. I just played for you a very simple clip that will be with me forever and ever until my dying day. That Britain put me in a country with a group of people that hate me. Do you know why we are suffering today? Because it was Nzogu that killed Ahmadu Bello. Adam Ahmadu Bello said, Ebos are domineering. Understand it very well. And the person that said that Ebos are domineering, you went ahead and killed him. So everybody will say, yeah, that is true. He was a domineering. And that's it. And he's stuck till this day. Anytime anybody from Biafra land wants to play this one Nigeria card, they end up getting all of us into trouble. Iron C did it. He's married to my aunt. He did it. Trying to make Nigeria one. He died in the process. And Nigeria is not one and can never be one. Nzogu did it. They had the accrual so Nigeria can be one. Is Nigeria one today? Look at Azikiwe. Is Nigeria one today? Look at all the politics of Ohaneze, of the Wanyamus, of the Ikemachukus, of Masanda. Look at all of them. Appeasement, appeasing the north, appeasing the north, appeasing the north. Jonathan went to campaign in the north and they stoned him. Nobody was shot. Nobody was killed. But ordinary Burata, a cattle herder. I don't know who gave him a gun. Promoted him to the Lieutenant General. That they blocked. Protesters blocked his road. They didn't throw stones at him or anything. He killed over a thousand people. What does that tell you about Nigeria? What does that tell you about the zoo?